The tragic death of Robin Williams has focused new attention on depression and suicide. Dr. Julie Goldstein Grummet, Director of Prevention and Practice with the Suicide Prevention Resource Center, which is part of the Education Development Center, joins us to talk about this very important mental health issue. And I did not know this, but every 40 seconds someone commits suicide. It is the 10th most common cause of death in people 10 plus years old in the United States. That is just heartbreaking. It is, and it's something that we don't talk about very much. And it seems like when we do end up talking about it, it is the result sometimes of a, a star, whether it's Philip Seymour Hoffman or, you know, Robin Williams, and we just become so devastated. And then the issue is back in the public domain, and we want to talk about it. Correct. We need to talk about this. Well, and for the hundred people every day who lose somebody by suicide, they are talking about it, but it's, you're right, it's not in the public dialogue, and, it, and we need to have it more in the public dialogue if we want people to feel open and comfortable and confident to say, I'm struggling and I need help. But again, it, it involves mental health, and in this country, we, you know, mental health is put over here, and then, you know, oh, I broke my leg, well, that's more important, and people can understand that and relate to that. But people t tend to have um, an inability uh, to relate oftentimes to mental health issues. And suicide is one thing I think a lot of people just can't relate, can't imagine anyone would ever have that thought. I think we do hear a lot about, I was taken so by surprise when my loved yes. one killed him or herself. But I think the truth is that we know that many people struggle with thoughts of suicide. Many people struggle with mental health problems. We just don't know what to do about it. So mm -hmm. we sort of wish it away, mm -hmm. right? We hear our loved ones say, I, I just can't get past this, or I just feel so down or low or hopeless, and I feel like nothing's ever going to change. And instead, we sort of say, oh, you know, I love you. It'll get better. Right. And yet, if we heard somebody say, I'm having chest pains That's every right. day, we would never High ignore that. High tail to the hospital. That's right. And, 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 and it's not that you don't want to help your loved one. It's what you said. You want to wish it away. I think that was perfectly put. And that's not the way it works. So tell me, how do I recognize in my family or in my close-knit group of friends, how do I recognize if someone is potentially suicidal? Well, I think the first thing is just knowing that anybody could be at risk of suicide. It's not sort of one demographic or one person who's experienced some event. Anybody can struggle with thoughts of suicide. We know that there are many people who are depressed in this country or have anxiety issues or substance abuse problems, all things that are related to thoughts of suicide. And if you were concerned about somebody, you should ask very sure. directly. You shouldn't assume that they'll come and tell you, oh, mm -hmm. when they need help, they'll tell me, because people don't. They're very, people often keep these things to right. themselves because they don't know what people are going to say. If you were worried about mm -hmm. somebody, you should say very directly, I'm really worried about you. I'm worried about the things you've been saying, or I'm worried about the things I see you doing, using more drugs and alcohol, or not coming to our family events, mm -hmm. or not showing up for work, or staying in bed. I mean, things that are really unlike the person's typical behavior and say, what's going on for you? Are you having thoughts of killing yourself? Sometimes when yeah. people behave like this, they're That's actually thinking of yes. killing themselves. Yeah, and back to what you said, don't wish it away. Go directly to them and ask. So is there any specific age range when this is more likely to happen than not? I think in this country we have historically spent a lot of time um, on prevention programming for youth and even for elderly. They had higher rates of suicide, there was funding available nationally through grants, so we spent a lot of time developing wonderful prevention programs and intervention programs. But what we know the data shows us now, it's men who are in the middle years somebody Robin Williams age who struggle with thoughts of suicide they have the highest rates of death by suicide and yet they're the hardest to really get into treatment they're not necessarily going to go tell a mental health provider so it really is incumbent upon family their primary care physician their employers others to notice something's going on and we've got to get this person assistance uh, 
there's something that's called suicide contagion that I just sort of wanted to mention, and it is when something like a Robin Williams, someone famous, uh, commits suicide. The, the media needs to be very careful in the way we cover it. Um, you don't want to give too many specifics because then that's going to perhaps give someone who is on the edge anyway an idea of doing it. I think, you know, when you hear uh, someone famous like a Robin Williams has unfortunately committed suicide, that that then maybe helps I don't know, it, it gives fuel to the fire for someone else who, you know, is having maybe some of these thoughts. And then it's like, well, you know what? If someone like him who had just was a genius, was just a, we're not going to see another genius like that, has all the money in the world, all the respect and admiration. If he couldn't make it, well, why can I? I'm not anywhere near as important as him, which is so not the case. But this is something that we do need to concern ourselves with. Absolutely. I mean, people look at that and say, and he had access to all the resources in the world, and yet he couldn't make it. So I, I don't know if I can. But yet, I think what's really important is you talked about the role of the news media. We don't want to glorify his death. It's tragic, and you're right, there's not going to be another phenomenal actor right. like that. However, we know that there's the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. It's 1-800-273-8255. We need that number with every media program, every newspaper article, the things you were just talking about. What should I do? What should I say if I'm worried about somebody? That needs to appear alongside every story so that as people read these articles, they don't feel hopeless. Or as a family member who has a loved one struggling with thoughts of suicide, they don't feel helpless. Right. Like, where do I go? I'm reading about this, and now what do I do? Right. So we need those warning signs, and we need the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline listed. I want to go back to something you said um, a little bit ago. You were specifically talking about men of a certain age that, that they tend to be more suicidal. And I'm wondering, is it because um, they feel like they are responsible for bringing the bread home for the family and the economy got bad and they lost their job and they feel like they're letting everybody down and as a man they feel like they're not, you know. Is that why you think men are, are you know, more likely to commit suicide within that certain age range? I think those are possible reasons. The research is really starting now mm -hmm. to try to develop reasons for why men who are ages around 45 to 65 are at greater risk. I don't think we know as much, but some of the reasons that you said, economically, maybe they're, they've realized they're not going to be where they want necessarily in their lives. Um, I think sometimes those are, ret are veterans who are no longer active service, but they're still struggling with right. some of those experiences. Maybe they start using drugs and alcohol to cope. Mm -hmm. I think more importantly, men in general don't tend to have the same types of social supports that women do. And so it's less about what causes it, because I think probably women also struggle, but mm -hmm. they use their social support networks. Women talk and mm -hmm. they share, and women feel comfortable asking their friends, what's going on, let's get you help. Because of the way our society sort of treats men to be kind of tough, yep. men feel like they really shouldn't cry or ask for help, that they should just kind of go it alone. And then those around us sometimes in the, particularly in the physical health field, don't necessarily say, just as part of our routine care, when you come in for a checkup, how are you doing? Right. How are you feeling? anything going on of concern lately, and delving deeper when right. they notice that somebody might be struggling. They sort of wait and say, eh, he looks like he's got yeah. it all, so I won't ask him. And you know, sometimes, I mean, I certainly, through my life, <laughs> I laugh to keep from crying, but sometimes the person who's the life of the party and hey, 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 that's the one who's really hurting inside. And so it can be a little deceiving to people who are looking at you because what they see the outer shell is, man, this guy has got it made. He's so gregarious and charming. And in actuality, you're screaming on the inside. I think that's true. But I think we've even heard in the media that some of his friends said, you know, we knew he was struggling. Yeah. And yeah. he'd been talking about depression. Yeah. And we saw that he started using drugs again. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, maybe you have to dig a little deeper to find it. But yeah. I think you see those warning signs. And even if somebody's the life of the party, when they're not, mm -hmm. you say, what's, what's going on yeah. for you?
Dr. Julie Goldstein Grummet, thank you so much for talking to us about this very important issue. And I want to make sure we give the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline number again, available 24 hours a day. You do not have to suffer alone. 1 800 273 8255. Thank you so much, thank Doctor. Thank you so much for having me. A blogger who combines motherhood with her passion for protecting the planet. That's next.